Hello and welcome to the Sports Grade Podcast, your bite-sized guide to enter the sports industry. And joining me in the studio, as always, is the lit Ruben Williams. How are you, mate? G'day, Ryan. I'm fantastic. Thank you. I'm, I'm a bit dimly lit tonight. <laughs> We've entered the studio to find that the lights aren't working. Those watching on YouTube will think, mm. where are they? I can barely see them. <laughs> no, it's not the brightness on your computer screen. Our studio has got a fault <laughs> in it <It's>, somewhere. <laughs> I must say, there's a bit of mood lighting. Uh, I don't hate it. No, me neither. Maybe something for us to look into for the future. It's yeah, it's quite interesting. We could do uh, candle lit podcast in the future. We do have an outstanding lamp next to us though, which <laughs> you'll be able to see if you're watching on YouTube. It's quite the design. Uh, well, no, you won't be able to see it on YouTube because you're looking at us. But <laughs> it's quite the design. But anyway, we're in a not that lit room. Yep. Let's crack in. Uh, if you want to learn more about who we are, feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn. Or if you want to ask us any questions, jump into the sports Road community. It is literally the marketplace for having these conversations and getting into the industry. So jump in. Absolutely. And a quick shout out to all of our members in the sports grad community. And in particular, the new members who have joined us from the mighty Melbourne Football Club, the reigning AFL Premiers yeah. and Gymnastics Australia. One of my favorite Olympic sports, Ryan, little known fact, but uh, welcome to members from those organizations. But if you want to get your foot in the door of the sports industry, hire people quickly and easily or learn from the best people in the world, there really is something for everyone inside the sports grad community. So get involved with that. Absolutely, Rose. Before we start today's episode, we have a little bit of info on our beloved Deakin University. They are the number one ranked sports science school in the world for the third time recently, which huge. is absolutely huge. Massive. And no wonder because Deakin's campuses are incredible. We've been down to the one in Geelong and in Burwood, absolutely unbelievable. Yes. With purpose-built, state-of-the-art, elite-level facilities. Deakin's undergraduate sport degrees, including their Bachelor of Exercise and Sports Science, will put you ahead of the pack and help you stand out to industry employers. You can even find yourself getting hands-on experience with big names in sport like the mighty Geelong Cats. So if you want that dream job in sport, Deakin is the place to start. To find out more and to apply for one of their sport courses, go to deakin.edu.au. And uh, that's the message for today. So back to the episode. What are we chatting about today? Ryan, today we're talking about four ways to get the most out of an internship. Now, when I was back at university, I reckon I floated through my first couple of internships. I supplied, was lucky enough to get the role and then just showed up each day and kind of did as I was told. And yeah. by the time I got to the end of it, I was kind of like, gosh, what have, what have I done? What did I achieve? Like yeah. what happened during those last... I know, floated 12? through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so if you can make the most of the internships and the opportunities that you get, then it can really set you up for the future. You know, you get all this great real world experience, uh, mm. both professionally and personally. You also start to create a really nice foundation of a network for yourself too, who can later help you down the track. And I know some of those networks from my internships are still kind of helping me today, particularly at Unisport Australia. So do not discount the impact that uh, your network in these early internships can have as well. So to help you make the most out of these internships, we put together four little points. And we're going to go through them now. Number one, Ryan, is to set clear goals. So mm. when you start your internship, if the organization isn't doing it for you, you're going to run this goal setting session for yourself. And what you want to do is think about what you want to achieve during the next 10 to 15 weeks that you've got at the organization. And one of the great ways to do this is just work back from the outcome you want to achieve. And particularly for internships, you want to leverage, leverage an internship into your next job. Mm. So one way to set an objective for your goals can be based upon the questions you think you're going to get asked at your next job interview. Yeah. So for example, if you think you're going to get asked, um, tell us about a time where you've had to demonstrate your initiative to achieve an outstanding result. Yeah. 15 weeks in advance, you can start to think about, all right, here I am. What can I do to show my initiative over the next 15 weeks? So then once you start to set a goal to it, add some numbers to it, and then track your progress along the way, you're going to notice the impact that you are creating. For example, if you are doing an internship 
at a football club and they ask you to run the social media accounts, you might say, I use my initiative to come up with a new line of content, which was post-match wrap-up videos on the field, just through my phone. And the impact of those videos increased the um, awareness of the club on Instagram by 15% over the course of the season. Yeah. What you've also done there is done your prep preparation for your future interview in yeah. advance <laughs> because you don't have to go back through and think, oh, crap, what have I done in the past? It's yeah. all logged there nicely exactly. for you. So uh, number one to make the most out of an internship is set clear goals from yourself and work backwards from your future interview. Yeah, absolutely love that. I, I feel like if you've got a clear goal about what you, you're going to do over the next set period, mm. that, that is genuinely what you just said there around your preparation for your next interview You've just got the answers sitting there, yeah. And it's not, and it's going to be really natural when you go to talk about that because you've just done the work. It's not like you're just making answers up from make believe questions. Mm. You're going to need to talk about success or what you've done in a previous role. So, mm. if you've got the goal there ready to go, you're you're sorted. Yeah, absolutely right. And sometimes interviews get called on the next day, like you don't have a lot of time to prepare yourself. Yeah. So if you've got this in your back pocket ready to go, you'll be in a much better spot. Absolutely. Number two is don't be afraid to ask questions. Now, having managed people in the past, you want managers would like their interns and the people who work underneath them to get the job done as best they can. So if there's something that prevents them from getting the job done, mm. we would like to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> so we, it's in our best interest that you ask questions, <laughs> yeah. that interns ask questions and continue to move forward with the job at hand. So if you feel silly or you feel like you should be knowing more and it's a dumb question, that's totally okay. Yeah. We've all been there. I've asked the stupidest questions of all the people. So, um, But your, what your manager is going to be more unimpressed about is if you allowed a roadblock to kind of stop your progress of work for the next three or four hours because you were too afraid to ask the question. Yeah. So don't be afraid to ask questions. It's okay if you look silly. But what's going to look worse is not doing anything at all. Yeah, absolutely. Don't wait. Mm. Big rookie error, I think, when you when you first start in any sort of role, it, whether it's an internship, or it's full time, whatever it is, don't wait to the last second to ask the question. Yeah, that's when they'll be pissed off. Abs- absolutely <laughs> right. Absolutely right. We've all done it though. We have. We've all done it, but that's why we're telling you now. Exactly. Because you're not going to do it. Nah, we've we've been there. We've been through the hard yards. <laughs> yeah. We're telling you so you can avoid it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> uh, number three is reach out and network with other people. So again, you might be assigned to a certain part of the business in your internship, but don't be afraid to mm. say hello to everybody in the building. You know, everyone in sport is extremely friendly. There's a lot of great people there. And in, you might not be able to picture it at the time, but there will be a point in time, some point down the track where these people will come back into your career, come back into your life, and you're going to need a relationship with them. One of the great expressions someone told me early in my career was, you never know when you're going to need your network until you do. Yeah. And by that point, it's usually too late if you <laughs> haven't got it. <laughs> yeah. So reach out, say hello to absolutely everybody. It doesn't matter what department you're in, um, but start to get familiar because organizations are a great place to meet a lot of people very quickly. Yeah. One thing I add to that is the more you know about the organization, the better you're going to be at your role. Mm. So I feel like, you know, if you can understand what every bucket, say, of the organization does, you're actually going to know what the business does and how it works. Mm. One thing that I really loved about when I shifted to commercial at Cricket Australia was that I had a lot more touch points yeah. in, within the business and that's just natural. But and that wasn't me just catching up with one person every week. But that was just, at, you know, the fact that the role is what the role was. But mm. you understand the landscape of the whole business a lot better if you if you know people in each department and understand mm. what they do. Yeah. So go do it. That's a great example. Uh, which leads me to point number four. Ask for experience in a wide range of roles and tasks. So as Ryan just explained, if you can understand what other people are doing, then you can see how your job mm-hmm. fits into the broader scheme of things. It's like uh, the Barcelona Football Club playing total football. Everybody should be able to play everybody's role. <laughs> yeah, that's a great example. <laughs> it's one we haven't touched on before. It's brilliant. Yeah, so you want to bring that sort of jogger benito to your, your career. Is that like Pep Guardiola days, yeah. the old total football? Yeah, 
I remember my old soccer coach used to send those videos <laughs> to us to say, guys, we need to we need to play like Barcelona. This is <laughs> under eighteen soccer. Yeah. We're like, uh, we can't even pass, right? Yeah. But anyway. Well, the administrators of sport around the world should be playing under Pep Guardiola's Tick attacker. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Um, so yeah, ask, try and get a wide range of experience in different roles. Um, now one way to do this is to uh, really time manage your week. So for example, if you are doing an internship and you've got a set amount of hours or you've got some set tasks that you need to achieve, find ways to get that done in the quickest amount of time possible so that you mm. can create more time to then go to another department and, and offer your services over there. Because what you need is your manager's approval of you spending your time in other places. And if you haven't got your core job done first, they're going to yeah. say no. But you've got absolutely everything you need to do done. Then you create the opportunity for them mm. to say yes so that you can go and explore more opportunities. So um, make that a goal of yours when you're in your internship to explore different things, but make sure you get your core job done first. Yeah, absolutely love that. There's literally no harm in finding something else. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. You're in the building. Absolutely. Make the use of it. Maybe a fifth thing I'll add is while you're there, try to get as much merch as you can. It's always <laughs> good to get, get merch when you're an intern. Yeah. Uh, and they're often pretty nice to, to give that to you. So Yeah, absolutely. Don't be afraid to ask for merchandise. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic, mate. Well, that, that's a great episode. I think there's a lot of people out there who are going into internships and thinking, okay, how do I make the most out of this? Mm. Um, and I think those four things pretty much sums up, you know, how you can best deliver an internship for yourself, but also for the the people who are who are giving you that opportunity. So, mm. great episode. Um, find us on LinkedIn. Plus, be sure to jump into the sports Hack community. As we mentioned at the start, had the mighty Melbourne Footy Club, the premiers of the AFL, join during the week, and Gymnastics Australia, which is huge. So, we'd love to chat with you in there. Jump in, head to our website, and you can find all the info in our show notes. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>